Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. You know, it doesn't matter what sport you play. There are always injuries to deal with. Interesting fact, about 25% of all sports-related injuries involve the hand or the wrist, and the sport of tennis has more than its share. Tennis, I guess, is an indoor sport this sure. year, right now in Minnesota. <laughs> the hand and wrist form that critical or crucial link between the body and the racket. And they're prone to injury because of the stresses that are involved, big stresses. If only there were a way to prevent those injuries to the wrist the tennis players yeah, face. Wouldn't that be great? If all, oh, wait, maybe there is. <laughs> Joining us in studio is Mayo Clinic orthopedic upper extremity surgeon, Dr. Sanj Kakar and sometimes co-host, and Dr. Ken Kaufman, a biomechanical engineer and director of the Motion Analysis Laboratory at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us, Tom and Tracy. Thank you. Good to see you both. It's the doctors Kakar and Kaufman show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so how did the two of you, th- by the way, thanks for being here. How did the two of you get interested in wrist injuries in tennis players? Well, as you know, Tom, one of the beauties of working at Mayo Clinic is there's many people who are far cleverer than you. And so I would see uh, an epidemic of this in the hand practice, especially during tennis events when we see the United States Open, uh, the first major of the year, the Australian Open. And we'd have a lot of people coming in from the weekend warrior. But really what drove me was when I would see younger athletes come in, truly gifted players who were coming in with a lot of ulnar-sided wrist pain and injuries from tennis. Ulnar-sided? On the sided, so if you think of your wrist, if you think of the the uh, funny bone on the uh, by your pinky on that side, okay. we'd have a lot of patients with uh, pain in that area. And as you know, Mayo Clinic has a strong tradition of treating tennis players, and so we would see a lot of patients come in, and it would be frustrating in that these were highly gifted athletes, but would suffer a lot of injuries, especially during tennis. So you said to yourself, "Why is this happening? Correct. And, and what can we do to to prevent it?" Yes, because we would see patients that we would treat non-operatively, wouldn't get better, we'd have to operate on patients, and they would be young, they would be 14, 15, 16, and that's a lot, that's a lot of trauma to the wrist at such a young age. And how did you get Dr. Kaufman involved, biomechanical engineer? Well, as you know, Dr. Kaufman is a world expert in biomechanical uh, principles and uh, has done a lot, for example, in baseball, and so I, I simply, over a coffee, said, uh, Dr. Kaufman, we have this problem, how can, uh, how can we help, how can you help us? And what did you say? I said we'd be happy to help. Um, we do a lot of studies of hum- humans moving, and this is just another aspect of what we do. So, what, well, what is it that humans are doing when they're playing tennis that causes this problem? Well, there's there's a few causes of why patients have uh, problems, especially not not just tennis, but in terms of racket sports. Number one is their mechanics are poor. Um, you know, some some of the athletes haven't had proper coaching. Uh, the equipment can be poor. It can be hand-me-downs from a, an older sibling or, or a, a, um, a parent. And also now, if you see, there's 75 million tennis players in the world. And a lot of these are the younger age groups. And they're hitting balls for excessive number of hours that their body simply isn't used to as they're growing. So there is a, a multitude of reasons for why we're seeing this. You're saying mostly it's overuse. It tends to be mostly overuse, yes, and it can be pertaining to how your grip is. There's certain grips, for example, an eastern grip and the way you grip your racket will give you pain on the side of your thumb. A western grip will give you pain on the small finger side of your wrist. So simple grip changes can affect where you get injuries. And is this where Dr. Kaufman came in? Yeah, so Dr. Kaufman will speak more, much more eloquently than I can in this, but he has an amazing ability in his lab and his team at really capturing down the tennis stroke to the minutiae of detail that one needs to see what's happening at that split second for when you're hitting the ball. So tell us about that, Dr. Kaufman. What have you figured out? Well, we're just starting our program with Dr. Kakar, so we um, are just uh, trying to build the program. But uh, from what we understand about the tennis stroke, People who are experienced have a different mechanics when they hit the, the ball versus people who are, don't have that experience, and that leads to the injuries. So, for example, the people that are experienced tend to do eccentric con- or concentric contractions uh, when they're hitting the ball, whereas people who are not experienced do eccentric contractions, which tend to dam- damage the muscle more. Do you know what that means? No. Me neither. Can you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> so a concentric contraction means as the muscle is contracting it's getting shorter eccentric means that as a muscle is contracting it's getting longer so if we're if we're have full force on the muscle and we're stretching the muscle it's causing the muscle fibers to tear and is this is this a problem for tennis players muscle tears 
Uh, it's m mainly tendon tears. So the muscle is the power that's pulling the rope, if you think of the rope as the tendon. So we lo see a lot of, for example, called extensor carpi ulnaris or ECU tendon problems, which is on the ul which is on the pinky side. So for example, with a top spin or the double-handed backhand, these patients can have pain with this. And it was so apparent to us that we reached out to the United States Tennis Association and working with their scientific com uh, committee, they've actually supported and endorsed our study, providing funding for us to do this at Mayo Clinic. So you think if you teach people a better way to, to grip the racket or a better way to, to use the racket that you can prevent some of these injuries? Yes, but it depends on where we see these players. Uh, ideally, we want to get them when they're younger, before they've learned these bad habits into their stroke, because I think it's much harder for a seasoned uh, ATP tour player to change their stroke and mechanics. That's what's got them there in the first place to change this. But the other advantage of this uh, research is that we don't know what normal is. And so when we see players and we're trying to rehab them back to uh, their play from injury after surgery or before surgery, how do we do that? We don't have objective guidelines. So partnering with Dr. Kaufman and his team, we're now for the first time able to get objective guidelines and data as to what normal is. And then we can use that to try and help our injured athletes back to play. So you suggested that most of the injuries that you see are implied that they're on the ulnar side, the, the small finger side of the, of the wrist. What is the most common injury you see? So I would say there's probably, uh, I would say it's an overuse phenomenon. And so when I think of that, I think of tendonitis. And I would say there's two main areas, num namely on the uh, small finger side, the ECU tendon, and on the thumb side uh, um, called decurvain's tenosynovitis. I would say they're the most common injuries that we see. Tendonitis, tendonitis. inflammation of the tendon caused by overuse. Correct. And you think that you can prevent that by changing the grip or telling them not to use it so much or, or how do you prevent so it? it's yeah so it's a multifactorial answer i think number one proper mechanics uh, learning how to hold the tennis racket properly secondly proper equipment and thirdly with some of this information that we're learning from dr kaufman for example the double-handed backhand that has taken over this sport but if a lot of our junior athletes are doing this incorrectly at the time of impact whereby the most seasoned coach can't see that because it's a split second thing that's how we can use this data to guide uh, the uh, stroke and the return to play. Are you saying possibly everyone who plays tennis needs to change the way they hold the racket? Is that no, what you're saying? No, not everybody. I mean, if you're out there playing with no problems, I think it's fine. But I think what spurned this, uh, this interest of mine is seeing the younger athletes come in with problems and injuries. And, you know, when I was 10 and 11, n never did I have an overuse type of injury. But now, how many children are out there playing racket sports over and over and over again, or stick sports, be that hockey, be that baseball, be that tennis, be that cricket, Tracy, the second oh, most course. popular sport in the world. I know, you're a big fan. <laughs> Do you think part of the problem is early specialization? So a kid, instead of playing multiple sports, starts playing tennis and more tennis when they're 8, 10, 11, 12 years old. Absolutely, absolutely. And when I spoke to the, the USTA, they actually endorse players playing multiple sports. They specialize way too early. And so this is something they should be specializing later in their teenage years as opposed to 8, 9, or 10. And it sounds like maybe you, along with the USTA, ought to uh, give some instruction to coaches as well as young players. That's a, gr that's a great point. And we've actually reached out to our coaches at the uh, Rochester Athletic Club, and they've been instrumental in coming along and seeing what we're doing. They've actually taken part themselves uh, to help sort of guide us to learn about this as we move forward. All right, 75 million tennis players in the world, 18 million in the United States, correct? Yeah, I think you're better research than I am, Tom. <laughs> I thought that's what you told me. Anyway, uh, wrist injury is very common in tennis players, and both of you are doing a great job not only in seeing these patients and taking care of them, but also trying to prevent injuries in the future. Thanks so much to both of you for being with us. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Sanj Kakar and biomechanical engineer and director of the Motion Analysis Lab, Dr. Ken Kaufman. Thanks much. Thanks for hey, having thank us. You.